Good evening, and thanks for joining tonight's TI Technology webinar hosted by Texas Instruments. Where tonight we're going to get you ready to go back to school and take a look at what's new with TI Inspire Technology. My name is Mike Houston, and I'm the moderator for this event. I teach algebra and calculus near Pittsburgh, where I use TI Technology to make tough to teach, tough to learn concepts accessible to all my students. Tonight we're joined by our two panelists, Sean Bird and Daniel Wilkie. Sean teaches AP Calculus, Physics, Intro to Engineering, and over the years has taught many other math and science courses at Covenant Christian High School in Indianapolis. And for over 20 years, he's instructed teachers in the effective use of the TI-8384, the TI-89, and now the TI Inspire and TI Inspire Navigator, and uh, probably newest, uh, TI Innovator. Sean has seven kids, so he really enjoys making learning <coughs> fun and hands-on. Sean, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. It's going to be a good time. And Daniel has taught every level of high school math over the past 22 years in a few states, Texas, New York, Virginia, and now South Carolina. He's currently the IB AP coordinator and IB math teacher at Woodmont High School. Daniel's been married to his loving wife, Amanda, for 13 years, and they have three awesome children, Cameron, Alex, and Kevin. Other than his family, Daniel enjoys educating teachers on all things TI and acting in local theater productions. Daniel, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Looking forward to it. We're expecting a large crowd, so your audio is muted. Feel free at any time to send any questions to Daniel or Sean using the Q&A window on the right side of your screen. We'll also be using the chat window to send general messages. And just a reminder, when you're using the chat window, make sure you're sending your chats to all participants, please. As a reminder, the session is being recorded, and we'll provide a link to the event certificate of attendance at the conclusion of the webinar, along with a link for the documents that Sean and Daniel are using tonight. We hope you don't have any audio issues, but in the event that you do, try selecting Communicate <coughs> from the very top of the WebEx menu and choose Audio Broadcast. At this point, Daniel is going to discuss our agenda. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, we're doing our welcome and introductions right now. Um, we're going to kind of go over some how-to videos with the TI Inspire technology and the new CX2. Uh, and new bells and whistles that they have and, and how they can help you out. Uh, we're going to talk about some back-to-school things to do. Um, me in particular, we're going to go into some classroom management ideas and how the new updates uh, and the new handhelds uh, can help you out. And then make sure you stay tuned uh, at the end of the webinar because there's going to be a little drawing for those in attendance. Uh, we're giving away uh, a free registration to the T-Cube conference in March in Dallas. So stay tuned. Thanks so much, Daniel. Mm -hmm. And Sean is going to discuss our expected outcomes. So besides uh, talking about um, things to do to get ready uh, for school and uh, some classroom management things, we'll also uh, enjoy learning about the new functionality and how these, uh, these, these, this functionality um, improves the, the ease of use. Uh, we'll experience how teachers and students can use Pathplot to discover and explore function, parametric, and polar graphs. Uh, there'll be some really neat little uh, graphs that you'll see uh, this new feature on Pathplot uh, that's on, available on the, the TI Inspire CX2 and uh, enhance your ability to implement the new features in your classroom. Sean, thanks so much. So, Sean, you sh should have control, and Daniel, feel free to uh, start us off. All right. Uh, the first thing uh, that we were going to discuss uh, is just a little, you know, back to school, what you can do um, to, to start off some good classroom management. Uh, now, a lot of this stuff I'm hoping that, that you are already using, uh, if you have either just the the – TI Inspire software or even the Navigator software, uh, and then your students hopefully are using the handhelds uh, in class. Um, I'm just going to kind of model 
uh, stuff that I do in my class uh, with with the handhelds. Uh, and uh, just to kind of make a, a slight correction, uh, Mike had mentioned that I, I was at, at a school, Woodmont High School, but I just am starting a new school, uh, and I forgot to, to send that to him. So uh, I'm starting fresh with um, – uh, a new classroom, a new school that's not used to the Inspire. So I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, showing them what the Inspire can do. And so they're starting fresh with the CX2s. Um, I got a classroom set of those. Uh, and and just just some basic things that you should be doing with your handheld just to, to get the year starting off right um, is, for one, since I have a classroom set, I make sure and, and I assign those calculators to specific students. Uh, I want them to have ownership uh, over the handhelds and what they do on them, uh, and I want them to be responsible for them. So just a, a simple way just to kind of get the ball rolling with, with the school year is making sure that every student is assigned a specific calculator. Um, and that just kind of, again, just helps them you know, feel like they belong um, to the equipment. Um, now, if you are using the navigator system, um, then, you know, there are a few things that you can be doing, you know, right off the bat with your students. Uh, one is, of course, you know, just having them log in and just I use them uh, in my classroom for attendance purposes. You know, the kids, they go in, grab the calculator, log right in, uh, and, you know, we, we just get going. Uh, so it's just a, a good way just to, you know, for me to quickly look up at the screen and see who has logged in and who has not, uh, just to kind of to help things out there. Um, and, of course, you know, once they're logged in, then you have a number of things that you can do with them. Uh, I always have a nice classroom starter with uh, just do a little quick poll, uh, usually from the previous night's homework uh, or the notes from the previous day. Uh, kind of not only connecting what we did yesterday, but then kind of connecting it with what we're doing today. Um, so that's just a good place to start, you know, uh, the day, uh, just to make sure that, you know, for one, they were paying attention and understood what they were doing yesterday. And maybe they did have some questions from the homework the night before. So uh, that's the way I like to start things off. Um, and then, you know, as the class is moving along, uh, you can also, you know, kind of capture the class, you know, if you have the navigator system, uh, just to see what everybody is doing uh, throughout the class period. Uh, so you can kind of show everybody up on the screen um, and even make them a live presenter. So the question is, well, what happens if you don't have the navigator? You know, what do you do? Uh, and that's where the beauty of the new CX2 comes into play. Uh, you can now, if you have updated your software, uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in a minute, is please make sure if you haven't done so already, is go to education.ci.com and update your software because now you have the ability um, to connect a handheld to your computer and make them the live presenter just with a USB uh, cable. So uh, even if you don't have the wireless navigator system with the hats, uh, you can still make someone a presenter, uh, which I think is fantastic. Uh, and I'm and I haven't used that yet in my classroom, so I'm very excited to to start doing that too, uh, because I know uh, I'm introducing the Inspires to a school that has really never used them before. So there are going to be teachers who are going to going to want to try to do this. Uh, so um, I'm very excited about that new new switch with with the new premium teacher software that hopefully everybody has um, updated. Uh, if not, please do so. Uh, but yeah, that, that's one of the new highlights uh, of the CX2 and the premium teacher software. Because you actually don't need, like you have in the past, uh, you have needed to either have the navigator software or just the teacher software. Now you just need one. So you just have the premium teacher software. You can either turn the navigator system on or off. Uh, in the software itself. Uh, so um, that's a nice, nice new little feature uh, with that. Um, so, and if you don't have the navigator, uh, which you can still be successful uh, with the Inspire, you have the ability to, you know, load the handhelds uh, through the docking station. 
So you can just send files very quickly. Um, I had in my past school, I had four teachers who had to do that because we only had one navigator system. So they were using um, the docking stations to preload the handhelds before the students got in there. It took a few extra minutes of work, but again, they were ready to go, uh, and it took a matter of seconds to, to, to trans transfer them. Um, so, uh, and then you can, you know, what I like to do with or without the navigator system, uh, with the navigator system, I'm, I'm always having little checkpoints throughout the class period to see who's understanding what, um, whether it be questions or just kind of open-ended, you know, discussions to have with the students. Uh, and I always embed those through the calculator. So either I'm sending them to them or if I don't have the navigator system, I'm preloading those questions on, uh, on the handheld uh, before they get in. Uh, and I also do that as a kind of ticket out the door. Uh, so before uh, the students can leave my classroom, they have a question or two to answer. Uh, so, um, and again, with the navigator or without, they're either leaving it on their calculator and I will get it from them, or they're going to send it to me um, through the navigator. Uh, and then also, I mean, we, we spent, I was lucky enough to be in a group of, of teachers who got to test pretty much every single activity that's on the TI website uh, to make sure that transitioning to these new handhelds, everything will still work out. Uh, and for the hundreds and hundreds, we had no problems. So still, you can go to TI education or education.ti.com and there's hundreds of activities there that still work with the CX2 and they are good pace setters for your classes. Um, that are you know pre-written, but if you don't like them, you can change them, you can alter them, you can make it fit your classroom. So everything that's on there, all right, uh, is still usable with the CX2. Uh, so there's a lot that you can be doing uh, right at the beginning of the year and throughout the year to help with your classroom management just by using um, this technology. Um, so that's just a few of the things that, that I use. Uh, and, um, so I'll throw it back over to Sean. Um, so a couple comments. Wow, that's impressive. You went through, you went through all the activities. Um, that's, that's a good workout. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so well, it was, I know, was a handful of us, so it wasn't just me. So I don't, I'm not going to take all the credit there. So. <laughs> I know the, uh, the math-inspired activities, um, a lot of the, the calculus um, activities, that um, are available on my website, uh, available on uh, uh, through the, uh, the the Inspire Google group. Um, that uh, what I did was um, I took what used to be um, a teacher-centered uh, instruction, and I made it um, hands-on and, and made it so that they could uh, be able to explore and, and discover um, the mathematics. And I think there's. Um, a lot of activities in, in all the other ones as well, the algebra uh, through geometry and, and algebra two pre-calculus. So yeah, there's a lot of um, great activities out there. And I do know that, um, okay, so uh, let's be nice and clear about uh, what things um, are, can, like there's an operating system now, and, and we mentioned um, about updating the operating system and um, how can you do that? Well. Um, one nice thing, if you have the teacher software, then um, it, it will automatically um, search for it. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have, uh, so here I am in the, the help, and you can uh, see what's, check for upgrades. There it is, check for upgrades and notifications. And uh, so you can see if you have the TI Inspire CX Cast Premium Teacher Software. We highly recommend, um, you know, I do and Dan does, we highly recommend CAS, um, and we'll talk about some reasons why um, using CAS is going to be even better um, now with uh, the, the CX2. Um, but anyway, if you get the software, one of the things he was pointing out um, earlier is that you can um, make somebody the, the presenter. So uh, there's that little icon of a camera where you can take a screen capture and, and yeah, you can um, capture the, the class um, or um, capture just whatever page I'm on. But with this capture the class, then um, 
I like to do who's ever logged in. And actually, um, there's actually only one person logged in right now. Um, so yeah, actually, let's just do um, you. And so here's what is on the screen. And um, as he was saying, um, we can do the, the live presenter. Make, make presenter, this is a one way to get to it, is, is through, um, through the little uh, camera that we saw there. And so there's uh, make that one the presenter. And then whatever you see on the screen, and even the button pressing as well, which is which is quite pleasant. So if you went to um, how about a new document, and you're like, hey, I wonder what things you have in there for the widgets, which is a fairly new um, activity. There's a new feature, uh, not the newest feature. So this does work on, on the uh, TI uh, Inspire CX. Um, there's some remote sums for my calculus class. There's um, some good times with the stopwatch that that's what everybody has everybody has a stopwatch but you can add um, other uh, widgets and there was some discussion about this on that Google group I mentioned earlier um, so yeah whatever and you can see the buttons being pressed over here and you can even show the key press history those are <laughs> the arrowing around so uh, for example how about scratch pad yeah look the scratch pad was pressed and um, delete once and then you can choose um, inequalities um, or, or relations. Um, anyway, um, so that's some of the live presenter, which is available for anybody who has uh, the premium software. It's not just a navigator feature now. Um, now, if you get the premium software, um, you have navigator on there. Um, and so also I showed under content earlier that you can see one person who's connected, and this could be connected with a wire. Um, just plug the Top of it into your computer with the USB and a little right click and yep there's one easy way to install the operating system or um, there's the live presenter so, so there's our live presenter tips um, so how about taking a look at this document that at the end of the time um, there'll be a link to to get this document and so I'm um, getting ready for school we had some discussion in the chat earlier about uh, when does your school start and what have you been reading and so um, now that we've talked about um, some tips um, like like that about um, you know the things to do to get ready for your school year ah, um, before we get into this file I have two other things we wanted to point out so here we are on um, TI's website education.ti.com and if you look under resources like let's say you're you're new to the Inspire and you're like, hmm, what's all there? Um, and give me some instructions. There's tutorials. So under resources, um, you choose tutorials, and uh, there's uh, so there's yep. Uh, who knew it? Professional learning covers uh, TI Inspire tutorials, graphing tutorials, and, and other. So hey, if you want some more tips about what can you do with a navigator, um, well here's some of the things. And actually, I already have it opened. Okay, I had it open. And here it comes. All the little videos that you could um, view. So, oh, nice one. First one is about um, updating your handheld, uh, tracing the graph. Um, and we'll hear, hear some really uh, fun features about uh, new trace capabilities, including the path plot, 3D graphing. So, some things to take your a level of knowledge from, say, uh, um, maybe you're three, you're pretty new to the Inspire, um, all the way up um, the little chart there, maybe all the way up to uh, eight, nine, and ten. Um, become one of those super users, <laughs> um, or at least ready and able to use it in your classroom. And that's what these things are are here and good for. Okay, Chuck showed you that. Another tip for back to school is um, how about free stuff. Um, yeah, how about the TI <laughs> Technology Rewards Program? So if your students are, are, bu are buying their own calculator, then or if your school is ordering a bunch, save these things right here. Um, and so what can you, you do with those? Um, okay, I've got that queued up right here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say that your school's been using the Inspire uh, for a number of years, or maybe even these uh, new... Um, 84 CEs, the things with rechargeable batteries. Well, as you know, with your with your cell phone, uh, rechargeable batteries are great for a good while, 
but then so I have my students get their calculator as freshmen and then um, they were using it for four years and about that uh, fourth year then they were like hmm um, I have to recharge the battery more often um, than, than they might prefer um, and so instead of it lasting for several weeks then um, they have to uh, charge it um, more frequently like um, in every evening or something and so I'm like ha got a good solution for you um, get one of those rechargeable batteries well let's say you have a class set and you um, want to um, get some new batteries well, the good news is, is this is uh, for the um, with those little reward points, just two reward points for an Inspire or um, more for other things. Uh, for example, the point value system. Let's see. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, yeah, there it is for the Inspire CX2. Uh, 50 points. If you got the teacher bundle, even more. Um, there's the 84. There's the 84 CE. Um, 40 points. Interesting story is the the 84 and the Inspire uh, CX um, are, are about the same price and the, the CX2 CAS is just like not much, like another dollar more than, and I know if you're in a huge school district that you have thousands of students or something, maybe that one more dollar makes a big difference, but um, wow, the, the amazing ways of exploring mathematics on this computer algebra system just opens up all kinds of doors for you. So there's how much you get for uh, the different things and uh, how many points you can get. Um, one thing I would recommend besides, you know, rechargeable batteries every, um, you know, four years or so, then um, another, oh, there's that, um, uh, the docking station um, that was mentioned. And so that one does take um, a few more. Um, so what is that, about um, 30 um, reward points. So, ooh, so if you're going to um, send out a little um, message to parents, um, include this picture and say, hey, if you're buying something, um, even if they're just buying a scientific calculator, um, they have um, points with that. And so a whole bunch of those add together. And then you can get some, some goodies. Um, one that I'll be recommending to some teachers tomorrow, um, I'm doing a workshop with some middle school teachers. Uh, and, and I'll be recommending that um, for just the cost of about, what, uh, 22 um, calculators that for free, uh, they can get um, the motion sector, the, the CBR2. So I highly recommend uh, the CBR um, calculator based ranger motion detector. Um, every um, school, every um, math class uh, needs some cool motion detector, whether you're teaching um, the parabolic motion of a ball rolling up and down the ramp or sinusoidal with a, with a pendulum or a spring. There's some great things to do with that. Okay. So. And yeah, and can I just add one little thing there? Um, just make sure, yeah, just let the kids know that they really can't use the points because <laughs> the way that you, you get the, the stuff from TI is you have to send a letter from your school on school letterhead. You know, a teacher has to do this or someone from your school has to do this. So the kids really can't use these points, um, uh, just to let you know. So it, that, that might be good to, to add to them, um, uh, that it is beneficial to the school. Yep. So there it is. Um, add them up and mail in the correct number um, along with the letterhead, school letterhead. So, yep, good message. And there's where to send it to. Um, then there was, if you're a college or university uh, listening in here tonight, then, then there's another way to participate um, about that. Excellent. So we saw videos. We saw um, that little letter to the parents. A Another thing um, that we have um, queued up and ready to to share with you is the um, oh yeah tips for transitioning from the Inspire to 84 and let's see I'll go ahead and click it I have it open but you know sometimes you get a few tabs there and you're like where to go yeah so on the uh, bulletin uh, TI <laughs> uh, board blog there's uh, tips for, for transitioning uh, to the TI Inspire CX from the 84 so if that's you then this could be a nice um, thing to know about. Yep, love the control left and right and divided by and a little tour of, of the keys. In the past, I've sent home a, a summer assignment where um, students in the previous classes had used the 84 and then they were coming to my um, class physics or calculus or um, whatever I was teaching and then they're using the Inspire and so I gave them a little uh, how-to which includes um, a lot of these nice things.
All right. Well, unless there's any um, questions about um, that, and I don't see anything popping up in the in the chat window about questions. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's a question. What do they use when they take the ACT or the, the state tests? Um, great question. Well, um, so this is true. The CAS is not allowed on the on the ACT. Um, but just now, um, because um, the CX2 is now allowed on the IB exam, uh, that's a, a new uh, feature because of something we'll be getting to here in just a few slides um, about being able to disable CAS. So, um, Yes, it is. Um, one of the things um, I've actually done regarding those reward points is I got uh, one of those Easy Spot uh, TI Inspires. Um, yeah, that's a slide case. Mm, so somewhere down there. So we use some of our uh, rewards to to get a couple of those uh, TI in, Inspires that are um, the nice yellow ones. And so, um, so I have a couple of the numeric, and when students are doing the ACT. At least in my classroom, I'm like, hey, uh, trade you for the weekend. Here's the, here's the because all the buttons are in the same spots. Um, sure, if you wanted to solve something, you might need to do a numeric solve. And I have very little going on over at the non-cast for the ACT. Yep. Um, so there's some other people chiming in in response to, to that. All right. So let's get um, started. And uh, this was one that I was going to um, have Dan tell you about. So this feature right here is um, the one that you can use on your um, the TI Inspire, um, the black or, or the white one that you have, um, the, the TI Inspire uh, CX. And then after this page, then we'll be getting into uh, the new functionality with the CX2. So uh, teachers get really excited about this one. So go ahead, Dan. What's the story? <laughs> well, uh, for this particular one, this was uh, one of my favorite things. Um, uh, a couple years back, they added in the top right-hand corner, you'll, and you should have noticed this, that it says radian, or it says degree, or it says gradient. Um, so that, that was a nice little feature. And then, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, wouldn't it be great if you could just mm -hmm. click on that and it would convert between radians and degrees? Uh, just something a little easier for the kids, for the for the teachers, you know, to deal with. And ta-da, they did it for this update. Um, so now if you take your cursor and move it up to the right-hand corner um, uh, and just click on where it says radian or where it says degree, it'll automatically switch um, uh, back and forth. It'll toggle between the two. Uh, and Sean... Is pulling up. Do you have that document that you can kind of show them um, yeah. by clicking on that? Because uh, I that actually the 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 page that you have set up in that document is is very dynamic and it's nice how it just kind of shows, you know, the different ways that um, you know the degree and the radian can can just kind of flip flop between there. Um, yeah. Here um, here comes. Uh, Here we go, um, ready, and so yeah, this page has um, a lot of things going on on it. <laughs> um, up in the uh, top left, you have a sign of 45. Um, now that it's in degrees, it, it does um, give a nice little answer. Um, and then here's a sign of 45, but, uh, oh, and there it is, the approximate, so same exact thing. And here's a sign of pi over four, and if you click, change it from degrees to radians, then of course sine of pi over four is squared root two over two. Um, so this is a notes page where I can have uh, one being an exact and the other um, being an approximate and and, and um, another one being um, and so it's it's ready to respond and you can actually even uh, set up a notes page to um, do some other things. Right click control menu is such a great uh, feature and so. Uh, the math box attributes instead of um, the little arrow you could be like you know equal sign would be pretty nice and appropriate and I, I could have even instead of auto um, I could specify uh, which angle attribute you wanted to be in um, so there's there's the, uh, the top left and here this is a uh, list uh, list and spreadsheet page and you have a variety of oh notice the this is um, a cache feature that um, since I don't have a decimal, then I'm just getting um, the exact 
And when I do have um, decimal, then you get the approximate. And then down at the bottom, um, notice the nice little uh, pi over 2. And, and so, yep, lots of things going on. Pretty exciting little uh, dynamic page. And so, yeah, I'm yeah. using a cast. So there'll be a couple of things that um, I'll be able to do on um, cast that you can't do um, like regarding this pi over 2. I think pi over 2 works on the numeric, um, but maybe like the square root of 2 um, wouldn't. Maybe it is um, pi. Uh, somebody could test that out on their numeric and check that for us. Um, so, Dan, do you want to keep on going and talk yeah. about um, the disable? Uh, the disabling cast. Um, so there's two ways that you can do that. Um, one is uh, from a teacher perspective, which is that you can do it to make sure that the kids um, kind of get it off of their calculator uh, is entering the press to test mode. Um, so thankfully, with the press to test mode, you'll know if, if anybody has ever done that who's listening. Uh, there's that little light that flashes, you know, at the top of the calculator, so you know it's on there. And so if you look at the list that Sean has displaying right now, okay, so um, right at the top, it says cast mode, and you can turn that on or off, uh, which which is kind of cool. Uh, and it takes, you know, the students a little bit to, to kind of get out of that press to test mode. Um, so that's a very nice feature. Now, you also have the ability. Oh, go ahead. I was saying I also love this. How easy it is to oh, get yeah. them out of press the test. So now we can just exit press the test, and as long as this exit press the test is going, then uh, and you don't even have to have a navigator. If somebody plugs in, then boom, they're out of press the test. Uh, exactly. There is with the set the default document settings that we can. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, so yep, there's cast mode right there. Um, yep. This is not press a test, um, so they would still have access to their other documents and things like that. This is just setting the uh, the default settings. So when uh, the document they're in right now, as well as all new documents, would be um, set up for this. Um, you might notice for this um, this nice little feature of of um, document settings of of sending those of preparing the handhelds. This was again under uh, tools and and prepare prepare handhelds. Which funny thing is I already have it opened and so. It doesn't let, let me go to it again. Um, I have one set up for my calculus, and sometimes I have had one set up for, for, for physics. So calculus is definitely always in radians, and sometimes I would have the um, other one. But now that it's so easy, I guess that's part of why it's not there once I um, did that. And, um, so I'm a big fan of, of um, real and o float instead of the float six um, personal preference. But there's the CAS um, way to send it out to this, the students. But for the students themselves, um, I think, yeah, so here's the DE solver. Let's skip that for a minute because that's only a feature. Well, <laughs> I don't know how many um, calculus teachers we have, uh, but this right here you can do on a numeric um, as well as on the uh, on a CAS, just differential equations, um, graphing those, and, and control T being able to, to see what the, uh, the slope is, or see what the value of that function is at various points using Euler's method. Or, um, and so, yes, this is a, a calculus functionality. I think we'll skip that because we have a lot of other really fun things to play with. But, oh, I think this is actually valuable. So um, anytime you see a dot, 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 driven at a point, for example, or um, differential equation solver, the ellipsis there, the little dot, 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 means that it's going to um, pop up a little wizard to, to help you out, to let you know, like, Oh, what do I do? How do I do this? And so you can type an equation um, y and the prime is well, one of the spaces you can find the prime is under the punctuation. So there's y prime um, equals mm, how about um, y over x. And what's the independent variable? Well, the dependent variable depends upon the independent variable. <laughs> and, uh, and then you could also put in an initial condition. Um, for example, um, y of 0 is equal 1, or how about y of mm, 0 okay, is, equal, is equal to 1. Sure, we'll go with that. Um, oh, this one said to do 3. Oh, guess what? It's always easy to jump back there. So that's what the wizard does is it sets things up. And um, 
this feature right here, the DE solve, reminds me of something that's been out for a little while. But um, yeah, you, <laughs> Infinity. Um, if we actually did the one that it was recommending, how about X over Y? Then we'll get something a little more interesting. There you go. Nice circle. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you just type in something like mm, 2X plus 3, 3Y equals 5, and you use um, the right-click control menu. So if we right-click, there's all these math actions. You could graph it. You could like, oh, yeah, I just want to see a graph of that. Or you can see these math actions. And see where it says solve. And you can solve for X or you can solve for Y. Um, I think I'll choose solve for Y. And you can do over the reals or, or, or complex is sometimes helpful, especially for um, if it, it was squared. But this is just, yeah. And so, and so since I'm using cast, then it sets it up. It shows you solve and comma Y since you wanted to solve for Y. And so that is um, a really nice new feature that um, you can do numeric solve on the, num on the numeric. Uh, the link for the Google group, um, good question. I'll um, dig that up for you and, and po post it. Actually, if you just search on Google, um, Inspire Google group, then it will um, pop up for you. Um, so that was, all right. So moving on, here it is. This is what we wanted to show you. So you try disabling paths from document. And so notice um, what's going to happen. So right now we have this nice little factoring going on right here. Uh, this is a notes page. And, and then if I were to um, go down, let's see. So that's, oh yeah, that's a fun feature that we were just talking about where you can do the math actions. Check, just showed it to you. Uh, so here we go. We're going to um, try this disable cast by pressing doc. And do you know how you would um, change the settings? And yep, everybody is quietly saying, I press settings and status number seven. And so <laughs> under that, it's not the um, change language, which is sometimes entertaining, um, but it, it is the document settings. And, and then to see cast mode, so we can turn cast mode off and see what happens. And there it is. It says, you're trying to do an X plus a 3X? Mm, not going to help you out right now. Um, you're trying to do factor something? Nope, that's a cast computation. They're restricted right now. And so um, you can make students, force them to be in there with press to test. Um, you could sort of secretly um, do it with preparing the handhelds. And, uh, and so there it is. But I probably ought to turn it back on before where things and the answer was how do you do it? The answer is press doc and settings and the document settings. Okay. So that's a fun thing to explore if you had the CAS. Um, so this answered um, a need in, I think, in Europe and also for the um, IB, uh, International Baccalaureate um, test, that they can now use their calculator with that. Um, so points by coordinate. All right, so what can we do with this? Um, well, the how do you use it is to press P when you're on a graph page. Um, and then, all right, so geometry trace can be useful um, in conjunction with this control P. So I've got a fairly simple example. Um, so press P and then type um, any kind of variable, like say like the variable A, and uh, press enter and type an expression with A in it, like sine of A. All right, so let's try that. I'm going to press the letter P, and I'm going to choose um, point by coordinate, and I will press the letter A. Now, first time I tried this, I wanted to use um, a tab, but this little tool tip here at the top tells you, nope, tab is not the secret. Um, input your first coordinate, and then press enter, and then input the second coordinate, so A, and here comes sine of A. Use the little trig button, trig sine of, and I wish that was an A right there, sine of A. A sine of A. Hey, look, there's a point. And isn't that nice? It, it pops up a little uh, slider there for you. And so we can be able to, to move this um, along here. Now, the settings of this slider, yeah, they're okay. Sure, sure, we'll live with it. All right, so, so what's so interesting about this? Well, as I mentioned, Geometry trace 
um, can be real friendly. Now, if you're hovering over um, the point that you want to geometry trace, then you could right click control menu on the handle and you see geometry trace. Found it. There it is. Geometry trace. And now that thing that we selected is going to leave a little trail behind. So isn't that interesting? Now there's some even more powerful things you can do um, with this. There's some geometry explorations that were really powerful. Um, but that's a little example I've got for you for this one. Um, yeah, instead of going by increments of one, it might be nice to uh, change the little step settings of this. Um, how do you do that? You guessed it, right click, control menu, and uh, let's see, settings. And instead of automatic step size, you can do something a little more pleasant like pi over six. That seems like a nice choice. And I'm starting at zero. Excellent. And so now as we move this along, you get some more um, points. And you can even get the maximums and minimums uh, for that as well. So that's the um, right click when you're hovering over the, uh, the, the correct correct little point there that you want to be hovering over. Um, so yes, uh, geometry trace is under menu and, and trace. And then there's the um, geometry trace. Um, yeah, definitely switching from CX to CX2. There's, uh, it's very, very much the same, very similar. Um, the, uh, so pathplot is a function that is only available on the CX2 also. You know, pretty much everything we're talking about now is like, wow, these are some nice things to find for, um, uh, nice things to, to use that for. All right, so I've got on the next page a uh, parametric graph. Uh, so I've got um, gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, and this equation for uh, acceleration. So gravity is pulling it down. Uh, this is the initial velocity in the y direction. Uh, it was 20 meters per second was what it was launched at. Uh, this is um, a football player. Uh, it's running at an impressive 10 meters per second, something like 22 miles per hour. It's passed a football uh, thrown at a reasonable 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. So we're going to explore the, the graph on the next page. And do you think the uh, receiver will catch the ball? Well, let's see. Look, look there's a path for the, uh, the football. And uh, the runner uh, was running at a speed of, of 10 meters per second. And what's this 1.5? Well, let's say that that 1.5 is um, about the height of, of the player. So a six foot person is close to two meters. And so 1.5 meters would be maybe you know where their hands would be to catch the football. And so um, do they intersect? Yes, they intersect. Um, does it look like, um, I mean, these, these two um, lines look like they, they intersect. Um, but um, the reality is, hmm, let's go to menu, trace, and path plot. So what kind of uh, function did we have? <laughs> well, it wasn't a function. What kind of um, graph do we have here? It's uh, parametric, right? So if we were to choose parametric, and then we see um, at time of, um, of zero, um, where they were, so see it says t equals zero, and we have the coordinates of, of each of them. And so the ball was thrown into the air at 20 meters per second, and it's moving along. Um, is that guy running 10 meters per second going to be able to, to be at the right spot at the right time? Well, no. In fact, um, the time is now 2.1 seconds, and the player is back here at about uh, 20 meters, 20 yards away, um, and, and that's way up there. So when does he catch up with it? Mm, about um, 3.6. So what could we do in order to uh, make it so that he can catch it? So what could we do with that function? Well, uh, how about a couple options? You could uh, wait to throw it. Don't throw it so soon. Or, or another option is, is how about start running sooner? So if we go for the start running sooner, then uh, that would be the uh, Y1. Yep, yep, there it is. And so to start running sooner, would that be um, how about let's run, uh, leave about 1.5 seconds earlier? So would that be uh, T plus 1.5 or T minus 1.5? 
Mm, let's try this. Um, and so then if we did the dun, 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 trace, usually I change it and throw it um, 1.5, but um, tonight we were going to go for, hey, start running. So when the time is zero, he's already up the up the way there. So there he is. Look at that guy. He's, he's already up here uh, 15 meters down the way. Okay, now throw it. And sweet victory. Right there they are at the same spot at the same time. The football and the runner. Uh, this file has some extra nice features to it, including um, a link to where you can uh, explore from the New York Times about um, the running speed of, um, of players and how that is very impressive running speed. Because some people would, would say, I just run faster. And uh, this 20 meters per second was only thrown at a, at, um, a, a gingerly uh, 44 miles per hour. You know, nothing like the speed of a baseball or, or even a tennis ball. Those things go flying at hundreds of miles per hour, or 90 miles an hour, whatever. Um, so yeah, on the next page, we've got the uh, quick poll that I've used when I'm presenting this um, with, um, with other teachers or students. Um, yes, the ball was caught or no, the ball definitely would not be caught. And then here's where they get to think about the options of, um, you know, oh, the receiver was too slow. Mm, he was pretty fast. Um, <laughs> And, and then the other options that, that could happen. Okay, so we'll, we'll do a few other examples um, coming up, but um, multiple tick marks. Let's take a look at, at some of the value of, of multiple tick marks. So on the next page, we're gonna hover over the axes and uh, the little tick marks and, and press um, the right click control menu and, and choose attributes. So here we are, and I put this example up here because I've had students miss this, this quick poll. And the first time they did it, I was like, how did they get the number nine? They're telling me that, um, so how many meters above the ground is a roller coaster at the start? You know, how you like ask some nice basic questions to see if everybody's understanding and, and comprehending what's going on. And uh, yep, you guessed it, they went five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's starting at nine meters. I'm like, oh boy. Uh, so now maybe that's what we want to test them on. But uh, so I'm over here on this axis. And if I right click on the axes and go to attributes, then uh, right down here where it says single tick labels are shown, um, notice how you can go to the left or to the right. And if I go to the left, ta -da, um, there it is. And so now um, they're all showing up, which can definitely help some students understand some things. Now, you might, uh, and, and I don't know if you noticed it, let's see if, uh, let's go to it one more time attributes and down here there it is so it says do you want multiple labels and then it says adjust the window if not shown so for example how about i go to a scratch pad and if i do it right now uh, let's squish this together a little bit more so there oh, okay okay so let's try um control menu uh, attributes right-click attributes and go down here and so it says um, adjust the window if not shown so right now it is set to be a multiple um, multiple tick marks but you're like I don't see multiple tick marks you are correct um, and so what can we do we could move this and and there we yep, there we go do you see them all and of course if it changed to that then you can't see it so a solution would be instead of every 0.5 if you made it every one um, or if you made this every square root of two. It's a little weird, but uh, just kind of trying to show off a little bit with cast functionality. So yes, you can have square root of two on there. Not sure why you'd want to exactly, but you could. Um, how about pi over two? Yeah, that'll work out great. So you have to play with the window sometimes is the message. And oh, more fun with path plotting. Excellent. So for functions, um, I highly recommend that um, you use it as a teaching tool, that you have it set up um, before the students arrive. So how do, you how do you set it up? So before the students come in the room, you press the menu, and where is it? Trace and path plot. And this, these are functions. Okay. So before they even arrive in the room, I would have it showing like this. And then you can ask some really great questions. And if later on you're forgetting um, what are some of those great questions, 
Um, then down here it says, what, what questions could be asked? Uh, what discoveries could be made? So, you know, do you think the, the lines intersect? Um, pre cal predict or, or, or calculate um, where you think they might intersect? Uh, calculate where they do intersect? Um, how many times do the two graphs intersect? And, um, and for, for polar graphs, um, how big of, a, of an angle until the cycle is complete? That's a great question um, to, to consider. And we actually have a, a polar graph um, coming up that we can um, take a look at those things. So here's, here's this one. And you're like wondering, okay, where do they intersect? And guess what? You could just use the left and right arrow. And so when you put in a negative 10 for the blue F1, then of course you get out negative five. Ta-da, negative five. If you put in negative 10 for this one, then, uh, then let's see, negative 10, that'd be negative 20 over three, minus two over three, that'd be um, negative 18 over three, which is also known as negative six. Isn't that nice? You do math and fractions can be your friends. And, and so you're moving along and you're wondering, okay, so do you think they will intersect? And, and so some students before we even started moving might think, hey, uh, two over three, you know, maybe uh, that's um, not as steep as one half. Well, it is actually more steep. So hopefully they figure that it's starting below it and the, it's more steep and where do they intersect? So they could do the math and, or make the prediction. And there it is at negative four, negative two is where they intersect. And do they ever intersect again? You're like, well, these are lines. No, of course they don't intersect. <laughs> so yes, you can um, do the animation, doom, 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 doom. or you can use the left and right arrows to, and I guess I have to stop the animation in order to use my left and right. Okay, I need to click out of it, that's it. Then I can use the left and right. Hey, I'm gonna try animating and then left. Ha ha ha, I'm fighting the animation. Or I can speed it up even faster. <laughs> okay, enough of that one. So, ooh, um, I've got another path plot coming up. How are we doing on time? Um, let's do a couple other uh, quick things. Graph labels. So, see how that's a B right there? Sometimes students don't make that connection between the B right there and uh, the B being down here. So if I were to change the attributes of this graph, um, G of X, attributes of that graph, um, let's see, oh look there, there's a, param a parameter. So I could label the parameter and there it is. See now it says two. So as you move this along, it says whatever the B is. So I'm gonna add a negative four. I'm adding five. And this would be another a nice problem, nice example to um, to do the menu, trace, and path plot. And those are functions. And so it could be like, okay, how, how often do they intersect? And is it a nice telling you the value, value of the functions even when it's not on the screen? And boom, there's one of the times, and the other time comes up. Um, Sinusoidal, so another function. Um, I won't take time to path plot that one, but I will take the time to path plot this. So one of the tricks is, what are these? So path plot, and are these functions? Nope. Parametric? Nope. And the correct answer is yes, we're going to path plot a polar. And so one of them is sine of 2x and the sine of 3x. And as I was saying, okay, the blue one, uh, is about to finish one of the pedals. There's one pedal finished. And so how long does it take for um, the red R of two um, is a function of theta. How long does it take for that one to complete the full cycle? And the correct answer is it completes it in pi. Whereas the other one takes two pi to complete that full part. So isn't that nice and, and clear? And there's um, this really neat thing about um, the, a planet in the moon and the 50th anniversary of um, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin walking on the moon. Uh, this is um, a nice one to, uh, to end with here before I pass it back over to, uh, to, uh, to Mike. Um, so if we did path plot and these um, look like polar, but yes, they are parametric. And so the question is, is does the moon ever intersect with the earth? So 
So here's the uh, the moon going around the the Earth, and thankfully, no, they they don't um, intersect. And so those are some of the nice new features that um, can be fun to play with Pathplot um, if you get the CX2. Uh, there's a lot of great draw drawing functionalities um, that are also able to be done now. Uh, for example, um, some fractals. And so, yep, I need to pass the ball back over so we can do the um, some ending things. Thanks so much, Sean and Daniel, for everything you shared. If you have any last minute questions for them, please feel free to get those asked. I know they'll do their best to get those questions answered. We're really excited that the T-Cube International Conference is coming to Dallas in mid-March. Uh, it seems like it's a, a ways away, but I think it's going to be here before you know it. A couple things are happening uh, regarding that conference that you might need to know about. Uh, one, if you're interested in submitting a proposal to speak, uh, those proposals uh, are due very soon. I believe uh, this month, uh, if not early next month, uh, that deadline closes. So feel free to visit our website to learn a little more about uh, submitting a proposal to speak at the t -Cubed International Conference. Also, uh, because uh, we're a little ways out from it, um, if you want to register, registration is open, and there's a really nice uh, early bird price right now. I believe it's $100 uh, to register for that conference. So again, visit our website to learn a little more. And last but not least, regarding the conference, um, as Daniel mentioned earlier, tonight we are giving away to one lucky winner a T-Cubed International Conference registration. And tonight's lucky winner is Peter Ward. So Peter, congratulations. We'll be in touch with you over email in the next couple of days to give you a little more information, but we hope to see Peter as well as everyone else at the T-Cubed International Conference. When you leave the webinar tonight, a brief survey will automatically appear in your browser. Your feedback guides us as we plan future online events, so we really hope you'll share your thoughts in the post-webinar survey. Mike, can I say something real quick? Please do. Uh, I just want to, for anybody out there who is at an IB school, International Baccalaureate School, uh, TI is uh, starting a series of webinars, uh, one a month, uh, that starts actually um, very soon, which is August 1st is going to be our first one. And we're going to do one every month talking about the changes to the math curriculum and how TI is going to be more proactive in the IB community. So there's actually a new website that's uh, starting with TI that actually just went live a couple days ago. So, um, so if you're interested, it is August 1st. It's going to be same time as this, 8 to 9. Um, and I'll be part of it uh, going forward. So uh, please look for that and register for that if you are an IB teacher. Thanks so much, Daniel. Thanks. So to receive a certificate of attendance for tonight, go ahead and click that link that just appeared in the window, the chat window. Also listed as a link for the documents that were used tonight by Sean and Daniel. Uh, I know it's going to be helpful for a lot of people tonight. Uh, and if you miss those links or if uh, they're not working for you for some reason, uh, hang tight, you'll automatically get a follow-up email. And in that follow-up email, you'll get links to the recording, links to the certificate, and links for the documents. And if you're watching this on demand, go ahead and copy that link into your favorite browser to receive your certificate. Last but not least, if you're uh, in need of any post-webinar follow-up, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-TI-CARES or send us an email at ti-cares at ti.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, Sean and Daniel, for everything you shared tonight. We really appreciate it. That's uh, definitely getting me in the back-to-school spirit. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Thanks Sean. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We hope to see you back online real soon. Have a great night.